Hello, and welcome to another D&D 5e quick build. I'm Colborn Thunderhammer, and today I'm going to go over the Human Light Clerk build. Um, pretty much, I've been doing a lot of, of darkness builds here lately, and so I wanted to do the other side of the coin with a build that revolves around the light. So without further ado, let's jump into the build. Today I have the Human Light Cleric. So far as build strategy, team support, and spell damage. For background, I went Acolyte. You also get the, um, Shelter of the Faithful as a feature for being an Acolyte. You command the respect of those who share your faith. You and your companions can expect to receive free healing and care at the temple or place of worship. You must provide any material components needed for spells. Those who share your religion will support you and only you. So basically they may help you, but they may not help your companions. It's all up to the DM. Next, so far as personality traits... I went with, I never follow a plan. This character is totally dedicated to faith and faith in their deity. Their ideal is, I trust that my deity will guide my actions. I have faith that if I work hard, things will go well. Next, for Bond, someone saved my life on the battlefield. To this day, I will never leave a friend behind. This is sometimes hard to roleplay, but also can be very rewarding to roleplay. Change anything that you want about this build, I just setting up a character. Next, for flaws, I am inflexible in my thinking. Pretty much the never follow the plan and never leaving a friend behind is very in inflexible and goes along well with the flaw. So far as deity, I went with Helm. For alignment, we will be neutral good. So far as class, obviously light cleric or laser cleric. Race, I went variant human because if you're going to make somebody that's summoning light and banishing darkness, you might as well go with someone that doesn't have dark vision and can also pick up a feat. Next, so far as languages, from our race, I picked up common and celestial. For our background, I went with Undercommon and Dwarvish. I figured somebody that is really good at summoning light might have been summoned to go look at things that are either um, in the dark or in places underground, and so Undercommon and Dwarvish kind of fits along well with this. Our speed is going to be 30 feet. Our size is medium. Our racial traits um, is going to be a feat. I went with the Warcaster feat. So far as proficiencies, we gain light armor, medium armor, and shields. Weapons, we get simple and martial weapons. And we do not gain any tool proficiencies. Next, so far as skills, um, we get insight and religion with the background. Next, for my race, I went perception. And... For first level in our class, I went Medicine and History. Next, so far as saves, we gain Wisdom and Charisma as our proficiency for our saves. Next, so far as stats, I put a point into Strength and Wisdom because Strength for us to be able to carry our armor and Wisdom for our spell saves and spell casting. Important abilities. At the first level, we gain spellcasting feature. You prepare a list of cleric spells that are available to you to cast choosing from the cleric spell list. Choose a number of cleric spells equal to your wisdom modifier plus your cleric level. The spells must be of a level which you have spell slots for. Um, your spell save DC is 8 plus your proficiency plus your wisdom. And your spell attack is your proficiency plus your wisdom modifier. Next, for the first level, we gain Ritual Casting. You can cast Cleric Spells as a Ritual if it has the Ritual tag and you have the spell prepared. 
Also, for the first level, we gain Warding Flare. This will come in very handy. You interpose Divine Light between yourself and an attacking enemy. When you are attacked by a creature within 30 feet of you that you can see, you can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on the attack roll, causing the light to flare before the attack hits or misses. An attacker that can't be blinded is immune to this feature. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your Wisdom modifier a minimum of once. You gain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. Next, our channel we gain Channel Divinity use times one. And you also gain two Channel Divinity options. Whenever you use Channel Divinity, you choose between one or the other. But uh, your Channel Divinity options are Turn Undead and Radiance of Dawn. And when you use Channel Divinity, you can choose which effect to create. You must then finish a short or long rest to use your Channel Divinity again. Some Channel Divinity effects requires a saving throw. Whenever you use such effect from this class, the DC equals your, uh, your Cleric Spell Save DC that we mentioned above. Our first feature, Channel Divinity Turn Undead, as a action, you can present your holy symbol and speak a prayer censoring the undead. Each undead that can see or hear you within 30 feet must make a wisdom saving throw. If the creature fails the saving throw, it is turned for one minute or until it takes any damage. A turned creature must spend its turn trying to move as far away from you as it can, and it can't willingly move to a space within 30 feet of you. It also can't take reactions. For its action, it can use only the dash action or try to escape from an effect that prevents it from moving. If there's nowhere to move, the creature can use the dodge action. Next, we can also use Radiance of Dawn as one of our, our um, channel divinity options. As an action, you present your holy symbol and any magical darkness within 30 feet of you is dispelled. Additionally, each hostile creature within 30 feet of you must make a constitution saving throw. A creature takes radiant damage equal to 2d10 plus your cleric level on a fail saving throw and half as much damage on a successful one. A creature that has total cover from you is not affected by this. Next for the second level, Harness Divine Power. This is an, um, an optional feature with a bonus action. Um, you touch your holy symbol, utter a prayer, and regain one expended spell slot. The level for which uh, can be no higher than half your proficiency bonus rounded up. The number of times you can use this feature is based on the level you've reached in this class. Second level once, sixth level twice, 18 level three times. You regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. Next for the fourth level we gain an ability score improvement. Also for the fourth level we get cantrip versatility which is another optional ability. When you reach a level in this class that grants the Ability Score Improvement feature, you can replace one cantrip you've learned from this class spellcasting feature with another cantrip from the Cleric Spell List. Um, the only way that I see this happening is if, you know, you chose two attack cantrips and you only use one and you kind of wished you had Spare the Dying or something else, then you can do it, but Clerics don't get that many cantrips, basically. Next, for the fifth level, uh, Destroy Undead. When an undead fails its saving throw against your turn undead feature, the creature in is instantly destroyed if its challenge rating is at or below a certain threshold. This is going to be CR 1 half. Next, for the sixth level, we get two uses of our channel divinity. Also, for the sixth level, uh, Improved Flare. You can now use your flare... Um, Warding Flare, when a creature that you can see within 30 feet of you attacks a creature other than you. So you can use it to help other people in your party and impose disadvantage on an attack roll. Next, for the 8th level, we gain another ability score improvement. It's plus 2 to stats or feet. Also, at the 8th level, Potent Spellcasting, you add your Wisdom modifier to the damage you deal with any Cleric Cantrip. Next, for the 8th level, we get another optional um, feature, Blessed Strikes. Replaces the Divine Strikes or Potent Spellcasting feature, you are blessed with Divine Might in battle. When a creature takes damage from your cantrips or your weapon attacks, you can also deal 1d8 radiant damage to that creature. Once you deal this damage, you can't use this feature again until the start of your next turn. This 
guy is kind of not going to be your up close and personal. This is a guess guy's probably going to stand back and fire spells until somebody goes down and then he goes in to help them. So pretty much you're probably gonna stick with the potent spell casting. But uh I mean, hey, if you really want to close in and go melee, that's up to you. But that would probably be the best time time to use bless strikes as if you planned on going in melee instead of using cantrips. Next for the 8th level we get um, an addition to destroy undead when the undead fails a saving throw against your turn undead feature. The creature is instantly destroyed if its challenge rating is below a certain threshold which is CR 1. Next for 10th level we get divine intervention. You use your action to employ your Deities A, describe the assistance you seek and roll a percentile dice. If you roll a number equal to or lower than your cleric level, your deity intervenes. The DM chooses the nature of the intervention. The effect of any cleric spell or cleric domain spell would be appropriate. If your deity intervenes, you can't use this feature again for seven days. Otherwise, you can use it again after you finish a long rest. Okay, so for spells, spell choices are for what you would normally give a, uh, would normally choose in a given setting for a cleric with a plus three to wisdom. If you have a higher wisdom, you can choose more things. It's just I figure about the average is going to be plus three wisdom. So the number of spells you can choose are the number of cleric spells equal to your wisdom modifier plus your your cleric level a minimum of spell. The smell must be a level for which you have spell slots. You can change your list of propel spells when you finish a long rest. Preparing a new list of cleric spells requires time spent in prayer meditation. At least one minute per spell level for each spell on your list. Also, each domain has a list of spells that you gain at the cleric levels noted in the domain description. Once you gain a domain spell, you always have it prepared, and it doesn't count against the number of spells you can prepare each day. Okay, so first cantrips. We are given the light cantrip in the beginning at level 1. Um, also, for the first level choices in cantrips, I went with Sacred Flame, Guidance, and Toll the Dead. I figured Sacred Flames went with the whole light theme and guidance so far as the inspiration, you know, the, the feeling the light hits you, you know, light bulb, basically. But, uh, basically, these aren't set in stone. If you wanted to get rid of Sacred Flames and put Spare the Dying, that could also be a very viable choice. Uh, most people like Toll the Dead. I just like Sacred Flame because... It goes along with the theme of the build. Next, for first level spells, for our domain spells, we gain Burning Hands and Fairy Fire. Also, for the first level choices that I made, I went with Bless, Bane, Guiding Bolt, and Cure Wounds. For my first level choice, and then for the second level choice, I went with Healing Word. That was our first level spells. Next is our second level spells. For our third level domain spells, we get Flaming Spear and Scorching Ray. And my choice for third level was Lesser Restoration. Um, I saw this build as kind of being... I mean, since we already get pretty much some healing back here, we also get some damage. Um, the ability to have like a cleansing ray of light that removes conditions and to be a backup and support for the party is definitely an option here and it also makes this build more versatile next for the four, fourth level spell choice i went with spiritual weapon next for our third level spells for the fifth level domain spells we get daylight and fireball and my fifth level choice was mass healing word can't go wrong with healing and for my 6th level choice, I went with Remove Curse that goes right along with the Cleansing Flame. And also, uh, um, the Fireball spell um, is a good way to get enemies' attention. Next, for our 4th level spells, at 7th level Domain spells, we get Guardian of Faith and Wall of Fire. Also, for my 7th level choice, I chose Aura of Life. And then for the 8th level, I went with Banishment. Next, for our 5th level spells, at 9th level Domain spells, we get Flame Strike and Scrying. Also, for my 9th level choice, I went with Greater Restoration for removing some more of those nasty conditions and going along with the theme of a Cleansing Flame. 
And next for the 10th level choice, Mass Cure Wounds. As far as equipment for magic items, Ring of Spell Storing is always good for a healer and anything that helps with spell casting. Especially anything that helps with the spell save DCs whenever you get to the potent cantrip that lets you uh, allows you to add your, your wisdom to your to your cantrip attacks. If you can anything you can do to help that save to let you do a little bit more damage with cantrips is also helpful. Our starting equipment is going to be mace, scale mail, light crossbow, twenty bolt shield, holy symbol, a prayer book, five sticks of incense, common clothes, fifteen gold pieces. Vestments, Explorer's Pack, which contains a backpack, a bedroll, a mess kit, a tinderbox, 10 torches, 10 days rations, water skin, and 50 feet of hemp and rope. Our armor class for scale mail is going to be 14 plus our dex modifier, which is a maximum of 2. So far as hit dice, they're going to be 1d8 times our level. So far as hit points at level 1, it's going to be 8 plus our con, and the rest is 1d8 plus our con modifier. Also for initiative, it's just going to be our dex modifier. We don't get really any, any pluses into our initiative. Alright, lastly, going on to into build tactics. This build kind of does a little bit of everything. And basically what it seems to be best at is removing things from allies and keeping the allies going. So, so far as our healing options, we got Cure Wounds, Healing Word, Mass Healing Word, Aura of Life. Mass Cure Wounds, Lesser Restoration and Greater Restoration. Lesser Restoration and Greater Restoration being the, the debuff removal part of this. Next, so far as damage options, we get a lot with this build. Toll the Dead, Sacred Flames, Guiding Bolt, Burning Hands, Flaming Sphere, Scorching Ray, Spiritual Weapon, Fireball, Guardian of Faith, Wall of Fire, and Flame Strike. Um, pretty much this is a kind of an offensive heavy healer. Our control spells are just banishment. Our debuffs, Warding Flare to impose disadvantage, Bane, and Fairy Fire. You can't go wrong if something's trying to hide with Fairy Fire. Next, so far as our buffs, Bless, Fairy Fire, Removal of Darkness, and Guidance. Um, also, uh, Guidance can help with those skill checks whenever it comes to non-combat abilities. So, pretty much this build has at least a little bit of everything. Basically, almost like a jack-of-all-trades kind of build. Alright, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed the build, and I will see you guys next time.